Shabbat Shalom, good Shabbos, Boker Tov. So good to see all of you this morning. And uh, we welcome uh, those who are watching us by live stream today. Uh, this is a Dot Yeshua Messianic Jewish congregation where Yeshua or Jesus is Messiah and Lord. And we look forward to having a wonderful uh, service today. Uh, thank you for letting me go to the Messianic Conference this week. I had a real blessed time. Uh, but it's good to be back uh, this weekend. So let me pray and let's commit this time to the Lord this morning. Avina Shabbat Shemayim, our Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for each person who's here and will be here. Uh, we pray for those who are on their way. Give them traveling mercies. Get them, everybody here safe. And Lord, we want to pray for anyone who's not feeling well today. Uh, please put your healing hand upon them. Uh, heal them, restore them, uh, resurrect them, Lord. Uh, uh, and, and just pray, Lord, uh, keep everybody who's healthy, keep us all healthy. Uh, thank you by your grace, Lord, that the pandemic has been subsiding. We hope and pray for it to go away for good. Uh, so, Lord, by your grace, please exterminate coronavirus and COVID-19, COVID-20, whatever they, 21, whatever they come up with, Lord. So, please protect us from all these things. And, uh, Lord, we just want to pray as we were praying before the service. Lord, bless each person uh, that's going to be leading us today, though all of us are participating. But bless those who are leading us today. Andrew leading us in the worship. Elijah, as he shares the drosh. Uh, as, uh, as Nick and, and Ron will be leading us in liturgy. Uh, and, uh, and also myself with a message today, Lord. So just bless each of us. Empower us. We pray, God, that people will really sense your presence, whether they're on site or, again, it's through the live stream. They pray they sense your presence today, God, and, uh, and it, it just draw them closer to you today. We pray we all draw near to you, and we know as we do, you're going to draw near to us. So, Lord, thank you in advance for how you're going to bless our time together today, and we just want to say afresh, we love you and we appreciate you so much. In Yeshua's mighty name, amen. Well, if you'll please stand as we're going to bring the Torah scroll out of the ark.
When the ark traveled, Moses would say, Arise, O Yahweh, and let your foes be scattered, and let those who hate you flee from before you. For from Zion the Torah shall go forth, and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. Blessed is the one who in his holiness gave the Torah to his people, Israel. Amen. Yamod Komen Ben Abalab, one of the last three wise men. We asked for a wise man and the Lord sent Kent. Amen. There were three wise men, the wise men and my father and my brother and I. So I guess there were three. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Good Shabbos. Could you please rise? Barhu and Adonai Hamborach Baruch Adonai Hamborach Leolam Bayed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamim, Vinatan Lanu et Torato, Baruch Ata Adonai, Noten Ha Torah. Amen. Praise the one who is to be praised and the praises due. Yamod Michael Ben Herzl. Now Pastor Brown will recite from the Torah. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, so this week's parasha is Vayishlach. And as you see on the screen there, it means and he sent. So this is uh, in Bereshit chapter 32, beginning with verse 4 in the, in the Hebrew, going through chapter 36, verse 43. So Lord willing, I'm going to chant for us. The, the first uh, four verses, I believe it is, of this week's parasha. And so this is going to be in uh, Bereshit or Genesis 32, beginning with verse 4. Vayishlak Yaakov Malachim Lefanav Elesav Achiv Artsa Seir Sade Edom Vaitsav Otam Lemor Ko Tomarun La Adoni Leesav Ko Amar Avdecha Yaakov Im Lavan Garti Va'echar ad ata. Vahili shur vechamor tzon ve'eved veshiv, excuse me, veshivcha. Va'ashlecha lehagid ladoni limtzon chin Be'enecha Vayashuvu hamalachim 
El Yaakov Lemor, Banu El Achicha, El Esav, Vegam Holeg Likratecha, Vearba Meot Ish Imo. Okay, in the English, what I just did in the Hebrew says, then Yaakov, then Jacob sent Malachim, messengers before him to his brother Esau in the land of Seir, the country of Edom. Who knows where uh, ancient Edom, where is that today? What country is that? Jordan, modern day Jordan. He also commanded them saying, thus you shall say to my Lord Esau, Thus says your servant, Jacob, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed until now, and I have oxen and donkeys and flocks and male and female servants, and I, and I have sent to my Lord that I may find favor in your sight. And the messengers returned to Jacob saying, we came to your brother Esau, and furthermore, he's coming to meet you, and 400 men are with him. So we're all in suspense, what's gonna happen? So I know Elijah will, will tell us what happened there. So, all right, well, God bless, uh, bless the, the reading of his word. Uh, and then, uh, let's see here. All right, so we're gonna come up and address the, address the Torah now. And also, Kent's gonna do the uh, blessing afterwards. Okay, can uh, you all please rise? Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Natan Lanu Torah Temet, Bechaye Olam Nota Betochenu, Baruch Atah Adonai, no tain ha Torah. Amen. Yamod Eliyahu bin Moshe. Now Elijah is going to prepare and do the drosh. Now, 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 who is this right here? I don't, I don't recognize him. <laughs> he got a haircut. Yeah, in it's a, it's pretty, a pretty significant haircut. <laughs> I like to get one haircut a week. Uh, I mean, not a week, a year. So it just gets really long and then gets really short. Uh, but you may all be seated. Good morning and Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Um, it's actually funny, you should ask my grandpa about it. Uh, he, he's, been, he's been hawking me Chinik for a couple, a couple weeks at this point, trying to get me a haircut every time that we're together. And um, yeah, I mean, like you can ask him about it, but like he, he, he made me an offer I couldn't refuse yesterday, so. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, so today's drash is going to be on uh, Vaishlach, which is a, the parasha where uh, Jacob meets Esau uh, finally after many years. And also, and what I'm going to be primarily talking about, he has an incredible experience wrestling with, uh, with an angel or with God, but uh, it seems like he's, he's wrestling with, with God in some sense. Um, and uh, recently, over the last couple of weeks, and I've, I've been... Um, getting into jujitsu, uh, and like, I'm really bad at it. So yeah, I very new, um, but pretty much what that is, is it's like, it's wrestling, but it's, it's like all on the ground. So you're not trying to like flip the person onto the ground. You're just on the floor and you're wrestling and you're trying to like, I don't know, sometimes choke someone or put their arm in an awkward position. And, but it's like, it's surprisingly safe for the most part because no one else really knows what they're doing either, and if they do, then they're going to be really safe with you. Um, and it's not, it's not like normal fighting. So wrestling isn't like normal fighting in the sense that like, you're not trying to, I don't know, you're not trying to like punch somebody which is going to cause damage. You're not, you're not going to cause someone to have a bloody nose unless it's an accident. Um, but it is, it is aggressive at times, but it's also like surprisingly 
friendly and, and even like uh, relational and maybe even intimate. Um, whenever my brother Isaac comes and visits from college, uh, he's always down to wrestle. And it's just like, he'll just be walking across the, the room and then we'll bump into each other, usually intentionally, and then just like, in a second we're, we're on the ground. Um, but like, it's not, it's not something where we're like antagonistic towards each other. It's something where like, I don't know, we're, we're expressing a brotherly bond, but like in a, in a unique kind of way. It's not like we're giving each other a hug, it's we're, we're, we're wrestling with each other. And that is a little bit, I think, of, of what is happening in this passage. So Genesis 32, 10 through 11 says, then Jacob said, I'm actually gonna, give, excuse me, I'm gonna give a little bit more context. Uh, Pastor Brown gave some context earlier, but this is the time when Jacob and Esau are coming back together, so they're brothers, and Jacob is terrified that Esau is going to take revenge on him, that after the things that Jacob did to him, and we've discussed a little bit about like why Jacob did some of those things, but Esau had every right to be upset about that. And Jacob was worried that he was going to take revenge, not just on him, but on his whole family. So Jacob is, is legitimately very, he's terrified. So Genesis 32, 10 through 11, he says, and Then Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, Adonai, who said to me, Return to your land and to your relatives, and I will do good with you. I am unworthy of all the proofs of mercy and of all the dependability that you have shown to your servant. For with only my staff I crossed over this Jordan, and now I've become two camps. So when he says two camps, what he means is he divided his camp into two because he was so concerned about Esau that he wanted if Esau attacked one camp that the other would be able to escape. So he's, he's terrified. He's, he, in a sense, like the wrestling match has already begun with God. Because he's, he's fighting for his life. He's, if, you, if, you, if you notice, like he is... He's pouring himself out. He's declaring himself unworthy. And he's calling on God based on God's promises. So he's, he's beginning kind of like this, this wrestling match even before it becomes physical. Then he says, deliver me please from my brother's hand, from Esau's hand. For I am afraid of him that he'll come and strike me. The mothers and the children. You yourself said, I will most certainly do good with you. And will make you your seed like the sand of the sea that cannot be counted because of its abundance. So he stayed overnight there. Then from all that he had he come into possession, he took an offering for Esau, his brother. So this is the, this is the first thing that I, I want us to remember when like, we think about wrestling with God, is that he is, in, in doing so, he's, he's coming to God and he's being honest, but he's also decla he's declaring who God is. And we, we know who God is to, to, to an extent. Like we, we, we know who he is from the Bible. We know his character. So when something doesn't seem like it makes sense, what we're seeing here is that we're supposed to go to God and say, you told me this thing, I don't really understand this. And God, God respects that. That's the type of wrestling that God wants. At least that's, that's the first aspect. God wants us to come before him and be honest about um, our experience, but also to say, God, this is who I know you to be and I don't understand these circumstances. So then the, then the magic happens. Genesis 32, 25 to 27 says, so Jacob remained by himself. Then a man wrestled with him until the break of dawn. When he saw that he could not overcome him, that's, that's the man, not Jacob, he struck the socket of his hip so that he dislocated the socket of Jacob's hip when he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the dawn has broken. But Jacob said, I won't let you go unless you bless me. There's a lot that I, I find very awesome about this. First of all, that Jacob won't let God go until he blesses him. And that is, I, I think that's hard for us to imagine because, and this is a good thing, and we're going to see Jacob's humility before God in a second. But we, we, we want to kind of like just, um, I don't know, like cower in a certain sense. We, we're, we're concerned. We, we don't want to boldly go before the throne of grace. But Jacob, he's holding on to God, and he's saying, I, I want your blessing. And if you remember, even though the worst things that Jacob's done so far, where he lied to his father, it was because he wanted God really bad. And here he says, I want your blessing. And how God responds is, he says, um, so he does bless him. And then Jacob says, 
what is your name? No, no, sorry, this is, sorry, I, I, I went out of order. So God's response to Jacob, he says, what is your name? He says, Jacob. And then he said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but rather Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men, and you have overcome. And then Jacob asked, what is your name? But the man said, what is this? You are asking my name? And he doesn't answer. And then he blessed him there. So this is, this is the type of relationship that, that God wants from us. This is the type of person that God wants to use and God wants to put forward. It's the type of person that will, will wrestle with God and will wrestle with other, with other people in the name of God. God wants, God wants a fighter. God wants somebody who, who is not going to just like settle for, for easy answers, but is going to like proactively pursue a relationship with him. And that relationship can feel messy sometimes. But I just want to tell you, like, that is the type of person and that's the type of relationship that God wants from us. Now, it's not, it's not all just like, I don't know, wrestling with God because Jacob and uh, we, we understand that God is infinite. God is our creator. Like we need to come before him with humility and with the understanding that, that he is God in heaven and we're just, we're on earth where we're, sometimes it feels like we're ants in his sight because he's just so omnipotent. He's so omnipresent and we're, our, our, our days are like 90 years. We're, 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 we're here and we're gone. So we do see the, the humility of Jacob is that Jacob names the place Peniel, for I've seen God face to face. And that's an honoring of God when he names that place. And then the sun rose, and just as he, he, he crossed by Peniel, limping because of his hip. That is why the children of Israel do not eat the tendon of the hip socket to this very day, because he struck the socket of Jacob's thigh on the tendon of his hip. And then later God says to Jacob, get up, go to Bethel, and stay there. Make an altar to the God who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. So Jacob, Jacob doesn't leave this, this match like without memory of this place, if that makes sense. He doesn't leave it unscathed in a certain sense. And that's not to say that, that when we are dealing with really intense, well, to some extent, it is kind of what it's saying. Like you, you, we undergo a lot, of, a lot of intense things in our lives, and we can't always expect to, to make it out unscathed. But what we can hold on to is that our relationship with God will hold us through. And that our relationship with God is, it's, it's the most important thing. I mean, we, we remember that Jacob clearly survived his encounter with Esau, but the most important, the most awesome thing about this passage is what happened between Jacob and God. Is Jacob so terrified of this event, he's so terrified of his brother, that he, um, he doesn't know what to do. And honestly, later on, he, he commits a pretty, in my, in my vantage, a pretty significant sin when because he's so terrified of his brother, when he goes out to meet him, he like puts his family in waves, if that makes sense. So he has his least favorite wife go in front. It's honestly, it's, it's really bad. And this is after the wrestling match. And that just goes to show that like we can have incredible moments of God, with God. And hopefully in our prayer is that day by day, we're more and more conformed into the image of his son. But we can't expect to... I don't know, we can't expect those, those high point moments to stay there. But we do know that, that we can always go to God and we can always be humble, but we can also always be bold. And even a, even a man like Jacob is able to be bold before God and God respects and God honors that and God calls us to do the same thing. So yeah, just wanna encourage you. Wrestle with God. That's the type of relationship that he wants, that, that, that intimacy and that, that honesty. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, good Shabbos. Uh, please rise as we put the Torah back in the ark. The ark is open. Es chayim hi lemachazikim ba v'tomachia meushar darachia darachenoam v'kol 
Shalom Tivotea Shalom Hashivenu Yahweh Elecha Benashuva Kadesh Kadesh Yamenu Kadesh Yamenu Keke It is a tree of life for those who take hold of it, and its supporters are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are paths of peace. Turn us back to you, O Lord, and we shall return. Renew our days as in days of old. Amen. Let's take a moment of silence. This is a slightly different version of Vishamru, so hang in there with me, okay? Vishamru, Vishamru, Vene Israel. Vishamru, Vishamru, Vene Israel. Et ha ha shabbat. Et ha ha shabbat. Le ha sod et ha shabbat. Le dorotam beritolam. At la sod at Hashabbat, le doro tamberi to lam. Benny, you vain, Benny Israel. Benny, you vain, Benny Israel. Oh, 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 tee, he lay, oh, 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 lam. Oh, 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 tee, he lay, oh, 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 lam. Gisheshet yamim asad nai. Shemayim viet haaretz Uvayom hashvit Uvayom hashvit Uvayom hashvit Shavat vayin nafash Veshamru v'nei Yisrael ed hashabat la'asod hashabat Ledorotam barit olam Lord, you gave your people Israel Shabbat as a day of rest, holiness, and worship, as a perpetual sign of your covenant with them, for in six days you made the heavens and the earth, but on the seventh day you ceased from labor and were refreshed. We enter into the Shabbat rest from our labors, a rest granted in generous love, a true and faithful rest, a rest in peace and tranquility, one in which we delight, and through it may we draw near to you and hallow your name. We acknowledge that Messiah Yeshua is the Lord of Shabbat. Through Messiah Yeshua, there is a Shabbat rest for the people of God. For the one who has entered his rest has himself also rested from all his works, as did God from his. May we be diligent to enter that rest through faith in Yeshua. Amen. Blessed be his name. Amen. For those of you who are in mourning, you may remain standing or you may remain standing if you wish to. Uh, the rest of you can be uh, seated if you wish uh, as we remember our loved ones. And may they be a blessed, sweet memory. Yit kada, yit kada shme raba, ba madi brakir te viam lik makute, viz mach pochane viyakareb Yeshua mishiche, bechayechon avion mechon of chayed a kovit Yisrael. Pagala, pagala, u visman karif, vimeru, amen. Yehishmerabamiborach, 
Continue with the Shema, and then I'll end with the Via Hafta. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto. Le'olam va'ed. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his name, whose glorious kingdom is forever and ever. V'yavta et Adonai Elohecha Becholeavchalevchalnavshechahuvechomeyadechahvehayuhadvarimhaeleashiranochimitzavchahayom <laughs> Peshifteh <laughs> And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your sons, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Messiah Yeshua said that on these two commandments, Rest the whole law in the prophets. And a relationship with him is a key to keeping these two commandments. Amen. And we shall continue now with Andrew Jackson, who will be leading us in worship. Shabbat Shalom. 
It's good to see everybody. Are you ready to worship the Lord? Let's stand together and worship Him. Awake, O Israel, put out the slumber, and the truth shall set you free. For out of Zion comes your Redeemer in the year of Jubilee. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For in the furnace of much affliction I have chosen you behold. And so for iron I'll give you silver and for brass I'll give you gold. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. You are my chosen, for I have sought you. You are graven on my hand, and I will gather those who are scattered. They will come back to their land. Oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, oh hallelujah, oh hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, oh hallelujah, oh hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, oh hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Adonai, Elohei Israel, Adonai, blessed is the Lord, Baruch Adonai, Elohei Israel, Adonai, blessed is the Lord, me and our Olam, Baha Olam, praise His name forever and again, me and our Olam, Baha Olam, blessed is the Lord, the God of Israel. sing and praise him and Israel will say amen sing all your nations hallelujah and Israel will say amen and Israel will say Baruch Adonai Elohei Israel Adonai blessed is the Lord Baruch Adonai Elohei Israel Adonai, blessed is the Lord. Me and Olam, Baha Olam, praise His name forever and again. Me and Olam, Baha Olam, blessed is the Lord, the God of Israel. So let the nations sing and praise Him, and Israel will say Amen. Sing all your name. Hallelujah, and Israel will say amen. So let the nations sing and praise him, and Israel will say amen. Sing all your nations, hallelujah, and Israel will say amen, and Israel will say amen. Forever and again, Mil Haolam, Baha Olam, blessed is the Lord, God of Israel. So let the nation sing and praise Him, and Israel will say Amen. Sing all your nations. 
nations, hallelujah, and Israel will say amen. So let the nations sing and praise him, and Israel will say amen. Sing all your nations, hallelujah, and Israel will say amen, and Israel will say Baruch Adonai. Elohei Israel Adonai, blessed is the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord. I pray that this morning we would humble ourselves, we would put ourselves under the fear of the Lord, that we would look to you as our King, and that we would reverence your presence, Lord. I pray this morning as we worship you, that you would fill us with your spirit and that we would worship in truth. In your name, amen. We bow our hearts. We bend our knees. Oh, Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things. Oh Lord, we cast down our idols and give us clean hands, give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another and give us clean your hearts let us not lift our souls to one another and God let us be a generation that seeks seeks your face oh God of Jacob and God let us be a generation that seeks Seeks your face, O oh God of Jacob. We bow our hearts, we bend our knees. O oh Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes. Cast down our idols and give us clean hands, give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to one another. Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to
that he is my savior off oh, love he plundered my heart from the grave this is the simple gospel yes i believe that he is redeemer off oh, love he settled the payment of sin this is the simple gospel and it will never ever change let the bride say amen let the bride say amen death is defeated our faith the good news of grace oh let the bride say amen i believe that he is returning yes i believe that he is returning forevermore his spirit is living the simple gospel and I will never never change let the bride say amen let the bride say amen yes death is defeated Yeshua is risen this is our faith the good news of grace Oh, let the bride say amen. The lost will come home. The lost will come home. The bound will go free. The weak will be strong. The broken redeems. The sick will be well. The hungry will feast. The morning will dance. The blinded will see. The bride will arise in power and love. Our cities will know the glory of God. Oh, the future is bright. There's nothing to fear. Revival. nothing on earth 
that could take you away Once I gather you under my wings I will bring you all back home again Though you've wandered you wandered like strangers To the ends of the earth I will send you a Savior I will send you a Savior I will finish my work You have no other shepherd You have no other Lord Green pastures are waiting In Zion once more I will bring you back home, bring you back home, oh my children. You will no longer roam, lost and alone in the night. There is nothing on earth that could take you away once I gather you under my wings. I will bring you all back home So we pray for the peace But look to the east For the sunrise is sudden and fierce Every prophet and priest And king in the city Will look on the one they have pierced We will mourn for the one we have pierced don't fear, oh my daughters, sons of Abraham. I will wash you with water. I will offer the lamb. Though your sins were like scarlet, they'll be whiter than snow. I have always been with you I will never let you go Sing it together now I will bring you back home I will bring you back home Bring you back home, oh my children You will no longer roam Lost and alone in the night take you away once I gather you under my wings I will bring you all back home yes I will bring you all back home I will bring you all back home again Adonai Elohim Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad well, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. I think we're going to have the announcements at this point. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Good Shabbos. Good to be here as always. So uh, we shall dismiss the children. Um, Tony, oh yes, 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 Sherry, Sherry, Sherry. Our very own Sherry with the children. So, okay. So um, everyone have a bulletin. If you don't, uh, if you can please raise your hand and there you go. Chris, um, can, Chris and Kim, if you can give Chris and Kim a bulletin, please. Sheila or uh, uh, Fanny, 
Fanny, wow, it's odd to say my name. Okay, yes, great. Okay, so <clears throat> thank you as always to the Essential team. Uh, if anyone can help with the setup and uh, clean up, uh, please do uh, talk to Virginia Evans. She's heading it up, thank God. So please do uh, talk to Virginia about that. We certainly could use the assistance. Um, as a reminder, if you can please turn off your cell phones. Uh, we have a kiddish after the service. Praise the Lord. So right outside we'll have grape juice and challah. So um, if you can please all join us for that and a bit of fellowship as well. Uh, next Friday night on Zoom during our prayer meeting, we'll have an open um, opportunity to share our praises to the Lord and our thanksgiving to the Lord. So please uh, do join us for that. Next Saturday, Pastor Michael will be preaching. If you cannot make it, uh, please join us on Zoom. Uh, if you can't make it next uh, Saturday, then it's a recording, so you can check us out on um, our website, Facebook, or YouTube. Uh, please mark your calendars. Saturday, December 4th is our Hanukkah celebration, our yearly Hanukkah party. Yay. So, yay. So uh, more to come on that. So please bring your menorahs, candles, matches. And if anyone can help on that, can you please see me? Uh, we'll need a bit of help setting up and food and um, cleaning up. So if you can see me after the service, that would be great. Okay, so um, members annual business meeting next Friday, not next Friday night, Friday night, December 10th, 8 p.m. on Zoom. So uh, we will email you the information on that. Uh, Caitlin Baldwin applied for membership. Yay, 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 yay. So um, please give elders feedback if you have any. So praise the Lord for Caitlin. Uh, and also, if you're planning to be baptized during a service, uh, please, uh, followers of Yeshua, please see the elders about that, and they can talk to you about that, and we can arrange a baptism. And uh, let's see, we encourage everyone to serve in some way. So on the website, there's a list of opportunities. So check it out, and wherever you feel led, uh, please fill that out and send that in, please. And uh, let's see, more Oneg. So, well, we do need help with the Oneg. So if anyone is interested in um, assisting in the Oneg's, uh, other than the Kiddush, although Kiddush is included, but it doesn't have to be, just talk to me about that and we can see if we can get some Oneg's going again. And it can just be periodically, uh, once a month, every other week, whatever, we're open. So, uh, also, I, I just want to say happy birthday to Catherine. Catherine, happy, healthy birthday. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise God. And, uh, okay, so, uh, tithes, offerings, we have a box in the back uh, for you to uh, give your tithes and offerings. Also, we have uh, a presence online on our website. Uh, you can have information, get information for both. Uh, mail in or just um, submit your offering through uh, online. So, uh, oh yes, there's two more things. November 30th is Giving Day. It's like charity giving day. So we would encourage you, um, if you're able, over and above your tithes and offerings, to give to a dot issue with a benevolence. Um, that helps out our uh, congregants uh, in need of financial assistance. And then on Saturday, December 4th, at 5 p.m. at Warner Park, uh, there'll be a, a table set up in the playground area across from the stage to make dreidels and Hanukkah and Hanukkiahs, menorahs. So please join in that. It's, it's a tremendous witness for the public to see that, especially Jewish people who believe in Yeshua. Praise the Lord. Yes, invite whoever you want. Yes, whoever you'd like to invite, please, please. And then you'll be coming here for our Hanukkah party 
um, to light the menorahs. And again, you'll be getting information as far as uh, the time and details for the Hanukkah party. So, um, Shabbat Shalom, uh, good Shabbos, thank you. Amen. I'll stop here. So, uh, well, again, it's good to see all of you here today. I mentioned earlier that I had uh, gone out of town, but it's good to be back. And uh, it's a, so, so, Catherine, happy birthday. Also, Ariel has a birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday, Ariel. God bless you. And and also. Uh, let's see, I don't, there may not, none of them are in here. The Rotes have an anniversary this coming week, and, and also the Messiases. So, so happy anniversary to them. All right, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to commit this time to the Lord. And the outline for today's uh, sermon is inside the bulletin. If you want to have that ready, uh, and, and those on the live stream, you can download that outline. All right, so let me pray. Avina Shabbat Shemayim, our Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for everyone who's here. I just want to pray your special blessings upon all of us uh, on site as well as online. Uh, and Lord, you know what's going on in their lives. And we just pray that you minister to them and you help them today with whatever they're dealing with. Uh, Lord, we pray for the peace of Yerushalayim. We pray for your peace upon the United States and upon all peoples for that matter. And uh, as I said at the beginning of the service, Lord, please touch and heal anyone today who needs healing. Uh, give encouragement to people. Give wisdom. Pray for financial provision for those that need it. Uh, we pray if there's anybody dealing with COVID today, Lord, please put your healing hand upon them today and heal them of that. And and we just, or any other sickness, Lord, please touch them and heal them. And uh, Lord, we just uh, pray as we're, we're uh, approaching Thanksgiving and then Hanukkah, it's holiday season. I know some people will be traveling. We pray, Lord, give people traveling mercies wherever they're going. Bring them, bring them safely there and bring them safely home. And uh, Lord, I just pray that... Uh, well, for those who've lost loved ones and maybe the holidays, that might be a challenging time for them. Lord, I pray for comfort and strength uh, for them uh, as they remember loved ones that they can't celebrate here with. But, but I thank you, Lord, when we know Yeshua and when our loved ones know Yeshua, we're going to see them again one day. So we'll have a family reunion. And uh, so, so thank you, Lord, for that that hope that we have, Lord, even during those times of challenge. So I just pray now, Lord, bless this time in your word and, and pray that you uh, will just speak to us and teach us through your word this morning. In Yeshua's mighty name, amen. Well, I'm, I'm curious, how many of you plan to eat turkey on Thanksgiving this, this year? How many of you plan? I know not everybody eats turkey, right? But, uh, you know, some do that. I don't know if you're aware of it, but, uh, you know, one of the turkey companies is Butterball, and they actually have a hotline that people can call in and get advice as far as cooking their turkey or if they have some problems or things like that, how, how to deal with it. They've been doing that for over 30 years, but they've mentioned they get some strange calls sometimes. For example, one woman called and she said, my chihuahua got in the turkey. How do I get him out? Well, she somehow figured out to get her dog out and it wasn't injured anyway. But let me just say rule number one, don't let your animals play around the turkey. Okay, just avoid that kind of uh, situation. Um, another another uh, woman called and said that she had lost her turkey outside in a snowstorm. She put it outside. I don't know if it was to thaw it out or whatever, and it got caught in a snowstorm and everything. So, so that's another rule. Please don't put your turkey outside to thaw out. Okay. Uh, another, uh, actually another man, he, he called the hotline, and uh, he said that 
his wife had asked him to thaw out the turkey, but also wanted him to wash their two twin sons. And so he thought he'd hit two birds with one stone. He put the turkey and the kids in the bathtub <laughs> to thaw it out. I don't can't believe some people do these things, but, uh, but they did. And so that's another rule. Please don't thaw the turkey in the bathtub with other people. Okay. Uh, and then also uh, one lady called and said, I cooked my turkey. And when I got it out of the oven, I realized my son had put one of his toys inside of it. He thought it was like a garage to put his toy in there. And I uh, said, can I still eat this turkey? I think they said it was okay, but, uh, but anyway, please don't let your children play around the turkey without you being there. Okay. And then another person, I, I find this hard to believe, but this is a true story. One man called and he said he sawed his turkey with a chainsaw. Now, maybe it was frozen. I can't understand why you would do it if it was cooked, but he thought, and he said, I wonder, is the oil from the chain, is that dangerous for me for the turkey and <laughs> stuff like that? So that's another rule. Don't carve your turkey with a chainsaw. And then, and then uh, finally, there was one woman. She cooked her five-pound turkey for 24 hours. And she called to see, is it done yet? And I think they said, no, it's overdone, Okay. <laughs> So, so don't cook your turkey for a day unless you want to serve up a burnt offering, okay? <laughs> That's a little bit too much, okay? I hope you have a good Thanksgiving <laughs> with turkey that's cooked properly, okay, and cut properly. As you probably, oh, I guess I should be showing you some of these. Uh, let's put this up here. That was, uh, Jose, why is it not uh, doing that? There we go. All right, that was for my opening illustration. Okay. As you probably know, the very first Thanksgiving Day was celebrated by the Mayflower uh, Pilgrims back in 1621. And they were doing that to give thanks to, to the Lord for his provision and bringing them through another winter in the new world. And then over 100 years later, in 1789, President George Washington was the first one who implemented this idea of having a time of Thanksgiving, you know, uh, nationally and stuff. So he did a Thanksgiving Day proclamation, thinking back to the, to the pilgrims, you know, what, how they had, had done that. But, but it was stopped by the third president. Who, who was our third president? Do you know? Who? No? Thomas Jefferson. Somebody said it. Thomas Jefferson stopped that uh, practice. I'm not sure exactly all why, but he stopped it. And then many years later, it was like almost 100 years, not quite 100 years, but a number of years later, there was talk about trying to reinstitute that. And actually, I don't know if you've ever heard of Sarah Hale. She's written something we've all probably heard before. But Sarah Hale was the author of the children's poem, Mary Had a Little Lamb. And she contacted the, pre the president and said, please, we need to start this. We need, as a country, we need to be thanking God, you know, uh, for all his goodness toward us. And it took a number of years. Finally, it was in 1863, Abraham Lincoln, this was during the Civil War, he reinstituted having a Thanksgiving day like that. And then finally, in 1941, Congress ratified that as a national holiday. So that's how it started. Now, it was originally started to show appreciation to God, you know, to thank God. You know, we don't thank just into the air, right? We thank somebody. We're to be thanking the Lord. Now, it's, now you know as well as I do, not everybody is doing it for, for that reason these days. For some people, it's just a day off from work. For other people, it's a family day to get the family together and celebrate. But I, I hope all of us who believe in Yeshua, I hope we really carry it to the full extent and we really thank God for what he's done for us. Amen? Amen. In fact, I encourage you around the Thanksgiving table to open up and ask people in the family, you know, what are you thankful for? You know, it's a, it's a good opportunity to, to, to do that. Okay, so what I want us to do today is I want us to just be reminded of Thanksgiving. 
why and how. So it's only a two-part sermon today. So why and how, and you'll see that on the outline in the, inside the bulletin. So let's think about it first of all. Why should we be expressing thanksgiving to the Lord? All right, I want to give you four reasons. You may think of other reasons, but these are the four I want to cover. Number one, the Lord commands it. The Lord commands it. Look at, uh, look at Psalm 100 verse 4. That's a wonderful verse. The psalmist says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Now, there's other verses. That's just one of them. But we're commanded to come into God's presence. I hope this morning when you came in here to adopt Yeshua, I hope you were coming in with a heart of thanksgiving to God and that you were giving praise to God because that's what we're to be doing. We're to have that thankful attitude there. Six times in the, in the Hebrew scriptures, it says, and, and I have the Hebrew up there, Hodu Ladonai Kitov, Ki Leolam Chasdo. And that, an example of that is in Psalm 106, verse 1. Now, it says hallelujah at the beginning, but then it does the Hebrew there, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his chesed. His loving kindness is everlasting. Amen? Amen? All right, so that's six times in the Hebrew Scriptures. Seven more times, it has almost that whole thing. It may just have part of it, you know, give thanks to the Lord or for his goodness. or It doesn't do the whole phrase. So think about it. Thirteen times, that's in the Hebrew Scriptures. I think God's trying to tell us something. <laughs> if he mentions it that many times, I mean, he's saying, hey, we need to give thanks to the Lord. All right, so that's one reason. I mean, I could stop right there, but I'm not going to stop right there. But the Lord commands it. But let me give you three more reasons why that we ought to give thanks to the Lord. And that is also the Lord deserves it. The Lord deserves it. And in, 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 in Psalm 106 that I just mentioned there, it reminds us why the Lord deserves our thanksgiving. For one thing, because of who he is. He's a good God. Amen? He's a good God. He's a great God. He's a good God. He's the standard of moral goodness, of character. But also, we, the Lord deserves it because of what he has done. A good God who's been good to us. How many of you would agree the Lord's been good to you? Raise your hand. I mean, he's, he's, he's good. He treats us better than we deserve. Isn't that right? Yes. Uh, he's good to us even when things appear bad or appear challenging. He's good because things aren't any worse, right? It could always be worse. And he's good because he doesn't give us the judgment we deserve. He gives us grace means he gives us good that we don't deserve. Gives us blessing. All right, so that's two reasons. The Lord commands it and the Lord deserves it. Also, the Lord is pleased by it. The Lord is pleased when we give thanksgiving to him. Look, look at Tehillim or Psalm 50 verse 23. He says, he who offers a sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me. And to him who orders his way aright, I shall show the salvation of God. So, so it pleases the Lord when we express thanksgiving to him. Now, let me just say this. If we are truly grateful to the Lord, then we will express it. We'll express it. Look at Colossians 1, uh, verses 12 through 14. Rav Shaul says, giving thanks to the fa Father. And then he tells us why. Why give thanks to the Father? Who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. For he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son. In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So, do you thank the Lord regularly for what he's done for you? I mean, I, I hope so. I mean, 
we, we have so many things to be thankful for, our family, our jobs, our home, our possessions, unexpected blessings that come our way, protection, deliverance, answers to prayers. The list goes on and on and on. Now, if we are truly grateful to... All right, all right I did that verse. I'm sorry, I didn't project that one. But let me just say a, a, a good reason that we ought to be give thanks to God is in James 1 verse 17, every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. So again, any, anything you consider good in your life, you have God to thank for that. So we ought to thank him for that. And let me just say that Really, we ought to thank him for everything. Look at 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18. In everything, give thanks. For this is God's will for you and Messiah Yeshua. Now, I've preached on that before. No, notice, at least in this passage, he didn't say thank him for everything. He didn't say thank him for a disaster that happened or you lose a loved one. But in the midst of everything, we can give thanks. We can thank God he's with us, even in the midst of difficult I know some of you may be going through some very difficult times right now. Maybe your heart is heavy as, as it approaches Thanksgiving. Maybe you've lost a loved one you can't celebrate Thanksgiving with. Maybe it was because of COVID or maybe some other reason. But I just want, you, I want to encourage you, even during that time, give thanks to the Lord in everything. Good, bad, challenging, when everything's going great, give thanks to the Lord. And here's the thing, if we don't thank the Lord like we should, then it indicates we're taking his blessings for granted to some extent. So we need to thank the Lord. In, in Romans 1 verse 21, it reminds us one characteristic of those who don't believe in God is they aren't grateful toward God. We don't want to be that way. You know, again, we thank God for eternal life. Thank God the Lord provided Yesh Messiah Yeshua to provide a way we could, our sins could be atoned for, that we can have eternal life. Thank God that we're alive. You know, we don't deserve to be alive. There's many people over in Forest Lawn and, and Mount Sinai cemeteries right now. I mean, really, we could be there ourselves, but it's by God's grace we're alive today, right? We don't deserve the places we, we, where we live. If you have a job, a family, resources, we don't deserve all that. You know, I was thinking about it. Let, let's say that somebody, a, a wealthy person, came into your neighborhood. Let's say they moved in. I'll say it this way. Let's say they moved in your neighborhood. And they just wanted to show kindness to somebody. So they went just at random to one of your neighbors, and they give them $100. And then the next day, they gave them another $100. And the next day, and they did that for 30 days in a row. You say, I wish I was that neighbor, right? Okay, <laughs> they were doing it with me. All right, but let's say on the 31st day, they then went to a different neighbor and gave that neighbor $100. They didn't give the, the same person. Now, what would you think if that first neighbor came out and said, hey, where's my $100? You've been giving me $100 every day. Where is it? I deserve it. I mean, and you say, well, they don't deserve it. They're just giving that to them out of the goodness of their heart. See, we are tempted to react that way with God. Because God gives us so much kindness and so much blessing day after day after day after day. When if we don't see what we wanted on a particular day, we might say, hey, God, where, where are you? Where's the blessing? Like, where's my $100? <laughs> I mean, not that he's given us $100, but where's the blessing? You see what I'm saying? We can easily fall in that trap and take God's blessings for granted. It's so easy to focus on, on what we don't have versus what we do have. This is a true story. I heard about a man named Charles. Actually, I'll put the picture up there. I heard about a man named Charles. He was a poor man, but with a large family. 
And his kids, they were very active, as most children are, and they were wearing their shoes out, but he didn't have money to replace the shoes. And he was kind of feeling sorry for himself. I know none of us ever do that. But anyway, he was feeling sorry for himself. And, oh, God, you know, I wish, boy, there's so many people out there. They can go buy as many shoes as they want. And I don't even have money to, to buy shoes for my children. And then he noticed in the newspaper, so this is back a few years when people were reading newspapers. All right, he looked in the newspaper and somebody was having a garage sale near him in a very well-to-do neighborhood. And he says, oh, maybe I can pick up some good things there real cheap. So he went there and sure enough, he found some good deals. I don't know if he found some shoes or not, but uh, he was picking up some good deals. And he started talking with a couple that was doing the garage sale. And he says, yeah, you know, I've been going through a tough time. You know, my kids, they've been wearing out their shoes and, you know, shoes are getting more expensive and it's kind of hard to replace them and stuff. And, it's, and he says, boy, you guys, you have so much, you must be so happy. And the lady started crying and she ran out of the room. And he says, I'm sorry, did I say something to, to hurt her? And the husband says, well, you see, we only have one child and our daughter, she's been a cripple from birth. She's never walked. She's never worn out any shoes. And Charles, after he heard that, he says, wow, Lord, thank you. Thank you. I have healthy children who can wear out their shoes. And so, you know, again, it's easy to focus on what we don't have. But let me encourage you, focus on what you do have. And thank God for what you do have. Now, there's nothing wrong with praying for other things, you know, that you may not have that you think are good. They're not sinful. But be thankful for what we have. Amen? Amen. And then a fourth reason that uh, we should give thanks to God. It will bless us. It will bless us. Gratitude puts us squarely in God's will. That's in 1 Thessalonians 5.18 that I just read a moment ago, where it says, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will. So when we express thanksgiving to God, we're in the center of God's will in that situation. Another, uh, another blessing we get by thanking God is gratitude defies Satan's lies that God is withholding on us. You know, Satan, he's a liar and a cheat. And, and if you want something and you don't have it, guess what Satan's going to do? He's whispering in your ear and says, God must not love you. Because if he loved you, he would give that to you. I'm just telling you, be thankful for what God's done for us. And don't listen to the lies of Hasatan. Amen. Another thing, the way it blesses us, gratitude helps bring God's peace in the midst of trials. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. I mean, it's a whole separate sermon I've, I've preached on before. But, but, you know, it says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. And what does it say after that? With thanksgiving. See, with, see that we can overlook that. But yes, we are to let God know what we need and trust him. But do it with thanksgiving. Amen. As we do it with thanksgiving, then it says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall guard your hearts and your minds in Messiah Yeshua. So that's what I'm saying. Gratitude, expressing it to God, it helps bring God's shalom and peace to our hearts. And then, and then uh, just one last one here in terms of it blessing us. Gratitude leads to joy. You know, the Holy Spirit likes when you thank God. And so you'll get that fruit of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit, it's, it's going to fill you with joy. Yes, because that is pleasing to God. All right, so that's four reasons. You maybe could come up with some other reasons why we need to thank God. But, but like I said, there's probably innumerable reasons. So I'm just going to mention those four. All right, now let's go on to the second thing. Number two. How should we express thanksgiving to the Lord? I want to mention just four suggestions. Again, you could come up with probably some other, other ways to do that. One way is through worship. We should express thanksgiving 
through worship. In biblical Judaism, praise and giving thanks go hand in hand. The Hebrew word that's norm, uh, the Hebrew verb that's normally translated "give thanks" or "giving thanks" is the Hebrew verb "yada." Let's all say that yada. Yada. "yada." Now, interestingly enough, "yada" in the Hebrew Scriptures it means it can be translated three different ways. It can be translated to confess, like talking about just confessing in general or confessing sins. It can also be uh, translated to praise or to give thanks. That's kind of interesting to me that all three of those can be translated. Uh, I mean, any of those is the same verb, yada. It just depends on the context. But the one thing that ties all of them together is yada means to make a proclamation. Whether you're confessing, giving thanks, or you're praising God, you're making a proclamation Actually, we get the, the, the name of one of the tribes of Israel uh, from that verb, Yehuda, tribe of Judah. That's, that's what it means. It means to praise or one who praises. And then the Hebrew word for thanksgiving is toda. So toda, all these come from yada, all from the same verb. Now, we know that our Jewish forefathers sang hymns of thanksgiving. An example of that is in Tehillim or Psalm 100 verse 1. It actually, in the Hebrew, which, which is what they call the superscription of the psalm, it says, a Tehillim for thanksgiving, a psalm for thanksgiving. So that was to be sung to God there. That, so that was worship. Look at uh, Psalm 95 verse 2. He says, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. So again, a psalm was to be sung. It wasn't just to be read. Also in Nehemiah, uh, let's see, I don't have it up there yet. In Nehemiah chapter 12, verses 27 and 46, it says that at the dedication of the wall around Jerusalem, it said they sang hymns of thanksgiving to God. So this needs to be, thanksgiving needs to be part of our worship. In, fa in fact, thanking God in worship is so important, was so important to our forefathers that they even assigned some of the Levites that that was their duty to give thanks to God. In 1 Chronicles 16, verse 7, you can look at it on your own. It says that King David assigned to Asaph and his relatives to give thanks to the Lord. And then later in that chapter, it mentions that he also assigned it to Heman and uh, Jedithon. So, so think about that. Their full-time job was to give thanks to the Lord. How would you like to have a job like that? That's all, that you were being paid. That's all you had to do. Didn't have to worry about anything else. It's just give thanks to the Lord and praise him all the time. Guess what we're going to be doing when we get to heaven? That's going to be our full-time job. <laughs> <laughs> praising the Lord in heaven, right? <laughs> so might as well get warmed up now. So get ready for your future job <laughs> that you're going to have as a believer in Yeshua. And 1 Chronicles 23, verse 30. It, it, again, this was going back to these Levites. It said, they're to stand every morning to thank and to praise the Lord and likewise at evening. So one way that, that, that we should be expressing our thanks to the Lord is through worship. I hope when, when we have our worship services, I hope you think, I've said this before, I'm going to keep saying it. I hope when we're doing the liturgy, maybe, maybe Nick or Ron is up here leading us in the liturgy, and we're doing the liturgy, I hope you think about the words. And from your, with kavanah, with concentration, you're saying, yes, Lord. I do thank you. I thank you you raised the dead. I thank you for Shabbat, Lord. I thank you for our fathers. You know, what, whichever, Amidah, or maybe it's in the Kaddish, whatever. You know, I thank you, or the Shema, Lord. Thank you that you are our God. I mean, just express that thanksgiving to God through the liturgy. And then when Andrew comes up and he's leading us through the songs, I hope that you're expressing that. 
You know, with that last song that, uh, that we sang, the, uh, of Zion, O oh, Daughters of Zion, and it goes through all these things, how God's been faithful to the Jewish people throughout history and all the wonderful things that he's done for us. Again, see, we need to be expressing that to the Lord. All right, so that's one way, is express thanksgiving through worship. All right, let's look at a second example, is we should express thanksgiving through prayer, through prayer. Now, this might be private prayer to God. It may be group prayer. It may be public prayer. It may be through the Amidah that we do each week. But let's express that. A common example also, I think, for all of us could, of, of prayer is giving thanks or grace over our meals. I hope all of you thank God for the, for the food. Even if it's a burnt offering that you have, you know, that was put before you, I've, thank God for whatever, whatever. I know nobody here burn gives burnt offerings or anything. It's all great. It, it's like they, you know, they could they could put it in an advertisement at the grocery store, you know, for the food. But but seriously, you know, it's traditional in Judaism to give thanks for food and drink, the Hamotzi blessing. Right? We're thanking God for the bread or for the food that we're eating. The Kiddush blessing, we're thanking God for the, for the fruit of the vine, the drink that we have. Think about at the Last Supper, Yeshua, in the, in the context of a Passover Seder, you remember it says he, he took the bread and he gave thanks for it. Right? So he's thanking God for the food of the, of the meal and everything. And also he picked up the cup and he gave thanks. So this is very Jewish but it, it also is very Christian. It's very messianic. We should all be thanking God. So I hope, again, this Thanksgiving, but all the meals that you have, I hope you always pause and thank God. I mean, sometimes people do it before the meal. Sometimes they do it after the meal. Then they do it both. That's okay. But thank God for your, for your meals. Uh, I went to visit my family uh, recently, and sometimes we'd sit down, and the children would just start digging right on into the food there. And I said, well, uh, who's going to give thanks for the meal? <laughs> and sometimes they would do it. Sometimes I would do it. You know, by us doing it, in fact, I was talking with somebody in the congregation recently about that. I realize if they're unbelievers, you know, not saying you have to make a big deal of it. But, you know, sometimes just by us bowing our head and thanking God for a meal, it reminds others, hey, they should be doing that too. So, so let's, let's set an example for that. Also, I want to encourage you to have special times of prayer when you thank God. I mean, you, I mean, really, every day would be a good, good habit to have. Thanking God for something every day. Periodically, I set aside some time to, you know, prayer and fasting with the Lord. And during that time, I like to spend some time thanking God. And I think back toward big times in my life when he's answered big prayers and and just say, you know, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for selling that house. Thank you for providing those accident witnesses. Lord, thank you for providing that job with IBM. I mean, whatever it is, just thanking God for things that, that were really big blessings, you know, for you in your life. We don't want God to ever think we're taking those blessings for granted. And then still another way to express thanksgiving is through some gift to the Lord, some tangible gift to the Lord. If you look in Vayikra or Leviticus, you see that of the animal sacrifices that our forefathers would offer up, one of them was called a peace offering, shalem, a shalem offering, which was related to shalom. And, and one of those peace offerings specifically was called a todah, or a thanksgiving offering. So that offering, the Todah offering, was only given when they just wanted to say, God, I just want to thank you for something. Your goodness, or that you did something, you know, special for me, an answer to prayer, a deliverance, whatever it was. The Shalem offering, the peace offering, and again, the Todah is an example of that, it was the only offering where the offerer was able to partake of it. 
The other times, like a sin offering, that was just for the priest and just offered up in fire to the Lord or a whole burnt offering. But this one, they could offer. So what they would do is they would offer up the fat and the blood of the animal to God in a sacrifice. But then they were able to take the meat and cook that. They and others would eat it. They might have poor people, needy people come, and they would get to eat with them as well. So that's a todah offering. So what I'm saying is that kind of a concept is very Jewish. It's biblical. Look at Psalm 50, verse 14. It says, offer to God a sacrifice of todah, thanksgiving, and pay your vows to El Elyon, or or to, excuse me, Elyon, Most High. Now, you should consider giving a thank. I think we as believers, we should consider giving a toda offering to God as well. Now, I don't mean don't, don't go to the grocery store and buy some, something and offer that up as a sacrifice. I don't mean that. I'm talking about think of doing something tangible to say, Lord, not just my words, but here's something physical or tangible to thank you. So as an example of that, uh, now again, in Scripture, we're all always to be giving to God. I mentioned, I've mentioned that before. I think the example of Scripture is a tithe, giving at least 10% of our gross income to God. And, and I'll tell you what, you'll never outgive God. And, and I mentioned this last week. Notice in the Scripture, it never says if you live in Los Angeles, oh, you don't need to tithe to God. You're living in an expensive place to live. We're to be putting God first in our finances no matter where we live. But, but let me say, over and above the, the tithe that we're to be given to God, God also speaks of offerings. We should give offerings over and above that. And that would be an example of a toda offering. Where we say, Lord, I just want to thank you. I've, known, I've had some people in the congregation tell me, like on the Jewish New Year, they say, well, I, just, I want to bring a New Year offering to the Lord just to thank you. That would be an example. Okay, so you're offering, offering that up, up to God. That's an over and above your normal giving to God. And so, so we mentioned it in the announcements, the week after Thanksgiving. So that's, that's on Giving Tuesday, but you can say it's Giving, giving Week, Giving Tuesday Week. We want to just encourage you to prayerfully consider. You just go, and say, I mean, don't do anything God doesn't want you to do, but pray about it and say, would God want you to give Something to, as a total offering to the benevolence fund over and above your normal giving to Adat Yeshua. Now, why do I say above the normal giving? Because if you just switch your normal giving to that, that defeats the purpose of it. I mean, we have ongoing expenses and stuff. But over and above that, just give, give a total offering. But if you don't feel led or you can't do it, don't worry about it. I'm just saying, just consider that. Look in uh, 2 Corinthians 9. Look at what it says, 2 Corinthians 9, 11 through 12. He says, you will be enriched in everything with all liberality, which through us is producing thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only fully supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing through many thanksgivings to God. So again, our regular giving as well as a special offering, that's a todah. We're saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you for providing for me. And then another way of of giving tangibly to the Lord is in service. By doing something in service for the Lord here at the congregation, or maybe it's going out and, and witnessing. Maybe it's going out and helping somebody in need, doing it in the name of the Lord. How, how would you, let me ask you this. How would you feel if you gave somebody a very valuable present and they never used it? You'd, you'd feel disappointed. Well, God has given all of us gifts and talents. He wants us to be using that for him. That's very valuable. So let's make sure that we're, we were doing that. And again, that's a toda offering. Say, Lord, thank you. You've been so good to me. I want to serve you. I want to please you. Okay, and so... That's, that's, again, so we need to exp- we express it in a tangible way. And here's the final example I'll give. We should express thanksgiving through public proclamation. Through public proclamation. Around 24 times in the scriptures, the, the writer says, 
I will give thanks to the Lord. Here's one example in, in Psalm 111, verse 1. It says, praise the Lord. So that was hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company of the upright and in the assembly. Nine more times, the writer said, we will give thanks to the Lord. Uh, an example of that is in, in Psalm 75, verse 1. Jose, you might want to be heading this way. Psalm 75, verse 1. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your name is near. Men declare your wondrous works. Around 12 times more, the writer talks of someone else to give thanks to the Lord. And then 19 more times... Uh-oh, what happened there? As soon as you walk away, it stopped? <laughs> I can't believe that. Well, that, all right, that, don't worry about it. I'll just, I'm almost through. 19 more times, the writer calls on others to give thanks to the Lord. I was, I'll read for you 1 Chronicles 16, verse 8. He says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. So the, the Hebrew uh, uh, verb, Hodu, that's the imperative of yada. It means give thanks. It's a commandment. We need to give thanks to the Lord there. So it is good to publicly thank the Lord. So we're going to give, as was mentioned in the announcements, we're going to give all of us an opportunity next Friday night during our normal prayer time. And again, this is by Zoom. You can just call in. You don't even have to be using the internet or anything. But I hope you'll all join us. The information's in the What's New. If you say, well, I've never connected on a Friday night. It's in the What's New. Join us next Friday night. We'll open up for everybody to share a public thanksgiving to God. And it's really encouraging to hear how God is answering prayer in other people's lives and things like that. So that's next Friday night. So, so think about it. What have, we, what have we talked about today? We said... We need to express thanksgiving to God. The Lord commands it. He deserves it. He's pleased by it. And we're going to be blessed when we do it. And then number two, how should we express it? We should express it through worship. We should express it through prayer, through some tangible gift to the Lord. And we should give public proclamation of thanksgiving to God. That actually, that was, oh, there we go. There's, that was the screen I was going to put up there. There we go. So that was uh, how to do that. All right. I want us to have an example of it today. Jose Yam has a praise. So I want Jose to come up here and share his praise with us. A public praise. Well, uh, it needs to be on. He's going to turn it on for you. Uh, okay. Um, well, uh, there is this picture. I wanted to share this. Last year, this woman... She lost her husband on July, and uh, a few months later, she lost her leg. And uh, but you know what? I want to give thanks today is because um, it's two weeks ago she gave herself to the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. And uh, that woman is my mother. And. Uh, I actually, uh, I'm amazed because for, since I became a, a Christian, <clears throat> I was praying for her, for my family. My dad passed away. I don't know if she ever received the Lord. And um, my mom was a surprise. I didn't even know there were things that uh, she went through in her childhood that I didn't know until I heard her testimony. Uh, she said that uh, she suffered since she was a child. And my, uh, then she married my dad at age 15. And uh, she, uh, after she started having children, my dad became unfaithful to her. And uh, I didn't know that. In her testimony, she said she was full of rage toward my dad. She wanted to, re to have revenge over him. And, uh, but uh, the thing that, 
that amazed me is that she even repented toward all of his ch of her children. She said that she wasn't even aware that she was hurting us. And she actually asked forgiveness. She said, she turned to my sister. My sister also got saved. She turned to my sister. She said, I know that your brothers and your sisters are not able to be here, but I want to ask you forgiveness for all that I did to your, to your brothers and you. So it was very amazing. Uh, for my sister's recount, she said that even on her wheelchairs, after she got saved, she was dancing with her wheelchair. And uh, not only that, uh, I think a few, a couple of days later, she got baptized. Both her and my sister. So, today I want to give thanks. Because even after I went praying for so long, I came, after I been saved, I came to Adad Yeshua, and Pastor Brown was also praying for me for so many years alone. And uh, so I wanted to all rejoice with me, because God, my mom, had found the Lord. And uh, I just want to share with you guys. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Jose, for sharing that praise. God. He told me he had a praise, but he didn't tell me what it was. So I didn't know that was it. But yes, I have been praying for his family's salvation. So praise the Lord. So next Friday night, I want to hear some more praises like that. So please hook in with us on 8 o'clock. We'll go to 930 next Friday night. So uh, I just want to say that if you're here today or you're watching the live stream, you're not yet a follower of Yeshua. We want to invite you to become a follower of Yeshua today. And, and believe me, if you truly do it, you'll have a lot to be thankful for. Because God will change your heart. And you'll see, wow, what he's done for you through Yeshua. How he had his son die on a cross for our sins. And that we can be forgiven. We can get right with God. You know, he was talking about his mom. You know, about his mom was hurt. You know, until we get, until we become a believer, many people are hurt. And they're hurting other people. And they don't feel like they can ever get out of that. I and mean, they're just reacting the way they can. But when we let Yeshua into our life, he delivers us from ourselves, from our struggles, from our problems. But let me also say, even after we come to know the Lord, we, we need to look to him and give up our burdens, give up bitterness, give up anger, so that he can free us from those things. So if you've never done that, invite Yeshua into your life today. Trust him to forgive you of your sins and give you eternal life. All right, if you'll please stand. Let's receive the Lord's blessing as we go. What is it? Okay, so next Saturday. All right, one, here's, let me just tell you very quickly. One of the things we're going to be doing, we did this last year, is that on each of the nights of Hanukkah, we hopefully will be showing somebody in the congregation lighting a Hanukkah. Now, we're going to do next Saturday after the service, for anybody who would like, we're going to all do it together here after the service. We're going to film that, and that's going to be one of the nights. So I want to encourage you uh, to bring your Hanukkahs and your candles next Saturday after the service. We're, we'll, we'll give you instructions, and we're going we're gonna to do that. And then also bring them on uh, Saturday night, December 4th at the party, and we're actually going to light them on that night of Hanukkah. Okay, so let's receive the Lord's blessing as we go. Yivarecha Adonai v'yishmarecha Ya er Adonai pana v'lecha v'hu necha. Yisa Adonai pana v'lecha v'yasem lecha. Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom or peace. Shabbat shalom. Good Shabbos.
Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat Shabbat, Shabbat Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shabbat, Shabbat Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. God bless you.